My name is Jim Moran. I have just returned from a trip around the world collecting strange and unusual masks. I think it's safe to say I'm something of an authority on rare masks. Festival masks, drama and religious masks, dance masks, and death masks from ancient tombs. A man's desire to change his face to assume a strange or frightening disguise, to impersonate his gods, or to frighten devils, is a desire older than the history of language. I've seen masks unearthed from the ruins of crumbling tombs, and masks hanging in exotic temples to ward off evil spirits. But nowhere in all my travels have I seen anything to compare to the power of this mask and the horrible curse it bears. This is the mask around which our story revolves. And I can tell you that even though I'm not superstitious, I wouldn't put it on for all the wealth of the Indies. This mask was part of an ancient ritual so unearthly, so terrifying it has been wiped out of the memory of man. Still, it is a thing of evil. Still, the dreadful power clings to this mask. You in this theater are especially privileged to join in seeing the terrifying sights that can only be seen through the mask. Each of you has been given a mask. When you see the mask put on in the picture, you put yours on too. Then you will share an adventure into the darkest, hidden recesses of the human mind. You will see dread and secret desires lurking in that darkness. You will see things never before seen on any screen. Soon, you will meet Dr. Alan Barnes, who meets his other self when he puts on the mask. Then you will begin to follow the threads that weave themselves into this gripping story. Soon you will see him put on the mask. Remember, when he puts on his mask, you put on yours. It is the beginning of the ancient and forbidden ritual of the mask. Ah! No, oh, no, 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 please, please. Ah! I've told you, Mr. Aiden, the doctor will be with you shortly. Could you call him again, please, and tell him that I'm here? I can't disturb him while he has a patient. You know that, Mr. Aiden. Hello, Michael. Won't you come in? Sit down, Michael. You deliberately kept me waiting up there, didn't you? Of course I did, Michael. Your face, what happened to you? I don't know. I was there when I woke up this morning. It happened again last night. What happened again last night? No use talking to you. All right, 
Michael? I don't know. It's like so mixed up. It's like a nightmare. I remember a girl, and my hands were on her throat. I think I killed her. Can you tell me anything more about this dream? What about these? Did they happen in a dream? They could have been self-inflicted while you were asleep. Can't you understand this is not just another case of neurosis or psychosis? This is a living nightmare. And you don't want to help me. Michael, of course I want to help you. But you have to help too. I'm cursed. I am cursed. Something you don't seem to be able to understand. Michael, you are a scientist. Now, is it scientific to jump to the conclusion that these nightmares are caused by a curse? Perhaps these nightmares are caused by some deeper emotional conflict. I need help. I, I, I'm like an addict. It's as if I were being hypnotized. Hypnotized? Well, who is hypnotizing you? The mask. What mask? How does it hypnotize you? Exactly what is this mask? The mask is to blame. You're just not aware of its power. Tell me more about it. But Michael, remember, it's not yet clear that the mask is responsible for the symptoms you describe. But even without the mask, you may continue having these nightmares. But let's start with the mask. Show it to me. Why do you want me to show it to you? Why not? If it's causing you all this anguish. You want me to give it to you? If you like. You want it for yourself? You want it too? What would I do with it? You could put it on. You'd find out. But don't worry, I won't let you have it. Michael, I don't want the mask. But if you show it to me, we might see that the nightmares could come from within you, and not from the mask at all. You don't believe me! I have told you the truth, and you don't believe me! The nightmares come from the mask! Doctor, you're a fool! Michael. Michael! Michael, come back here. What happened, Dr. Bond? Worried about Mr. Raiden. He's very disturbed. Shall I call his parents? No. No, I think not. Well, it's time you went home, Miss Goodrich. You let the doctor do the work. All right. But I'm not that fragile, you know. You could do with some rest yourself. You look kind of tired, too. Yes. Yes, it's been one of those 48-hour days. Good night. Good night. I said, mail it! 
That's different. Thanks. See if you can't keep the place clean. Yes, 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 yes. Police lab. Yeah, he's here. Just a moment. It's for you. Dispatch officer. Thanks. Martin. Yeah. Oh, yeah? J just a minute. Okay. Right, got it. Be right over. More trouble. Get the car. Another interesting case, huh? They're always interesting. Matter of fact, uh, we might have a little playmate for your friends down in the freezer. <laughs> Calm down, will you please, Mrs. Kelly? <laughs> Tenants will move out. I shouldn't have let him in. He was trouble, him and his doodads and his ways. Call him Org, will you, Bill? <laughs> oh, this is awful. <laughs> what will the neighbors say? <laughs> Try to calm down, will you please, Mrs. Kelly? We need your help. Yes, yes, Lieutenant. I'm sorry, anything I can do. What was his name? Mr. Raiden. Michael Raiden, poor soul. <laughs> when he first came, he seemed like a nice, quiet sort of person, but I wouldn't have any other kind, you know. But then he turned, became very secretive. The last few weeks, he hardly even said good morning to anybody. Why, it was just yesterday that... Did he have any friends or relatives? No. Oh, oh I do know one thing. He, he worked for a kind of museum. He was a sort of professor there. Now that checks. Pay stubs and uncashed checks. Museum of Ancient History. Hmm. Uh, that'll be all. Thank you, Mrs. Kelly. We'll call if we need you. Look, Bill, take over here, will you? Sure. I think I'll go down to this museum, see what I can find out. Right, I'll check this place over. If I can find anything in this junk pile. I can't tell you how shocked I am at Michael's death. He had such a brilliant mind. Dr. Soames, you're our only lead so far. I wonder if you could tell me something about Mr. Raiden. Yes, anything I know. To begin with, did he have any problems or enemies? None that I was aware of. You see, Michael was a brilliant archaeologist. Brought back some excellent finds. Sent back even better things when going it alone. But, um, as for his private life, I, I'm afraid I've no information. Do you know what he was working on at home? Of course, he was cataloging some of the finds from the Lamar digs. He took objects home with him, didn't he? 
Yes. Now it's again. Why do you ask? Well, because we have to work on the possibility that what looks like suicide might not be. Now, something might have been stolen if there were objects there belonging to the museum. Possibly there was an object of great value. Now, maybe somebody knew that. And this could lead to murder. Murder? Dr. Soames, I'd like you to come with me to Raiden's apartment. If there's anything missing, you might be able to spot it. It would certainly help speed up our investigation. Yes, Lieutenant. Oh, uh, just a moment. Now, I'll just get the list. Yeah. Here we are. After you, Lieutenant. Thank you. There is something in there. A mask. A mask? What kind of a mask? It was an Indian ritual mask. Very rare and beautiful. Worthless to someone who doesn't know what it is. If someone took this, he knew what he was doing. Oh, it is a great archaeological find. Raiden had taken it home several weeks ago for additional study. Seems strange they'd allow a valuable object to leave the museum. How valuable was it? Well, in dollars and cents, it was worth very little, but as a work of antiquity, of great interest to scholars, price. It may have had some other kind of value as well. You mean beyond a money value? Dr. Soames, this mask is starting to sound very interesting. <laughs> Lieutenant, I, I don't know how I'm going to tell you this, because I, I don't want to be accused of spreading old wives' tales, but uh, there's a legend connected with this mask. Yes, I can imagine. But surely, Dr. Soames, you don't believe in these legends in this day and age. Lieutenant Martin, I'm not saying this is true or untrue. I'm merely giving you information about the legend of the mask. I didn't mean any offense. Please go on. Well, the legend states that in the wrong hands, this mask can do a great deal of harm. It can put the wearer in a hypnotic trance. They can do cruel and unnatural things. That's quite a legend, Doctor. If I believed it, it would solve a lot of things. However, I'm a policeman, not an archaeologist. I was talking to the policeman. The legend tells of rites connected with this mask, which are filled with human sacrifice. Now, suppose someone knew about this legend and believed it. Do you know, uh, Barnes, that may mean anything to you. Should it? Has it some bearing on this case? Probably not. We found his name amongst Raiden's papers. I knew how ill he was. I shouldn't have let him leave the office. I should have notified the police. Why do you say that, Doctor? He was very troubled. He was under tremendous pressures. It's hard to explain. He came to my office a few days ago with a story of having fallen under the influence of some ancient rite. Involving a tribal mask? Oh, yes. How did you know about that? From the Museum of Ancient History, where he works. He has an obsession about that thing. He blamed it for visions, nightmares. When he left his office, he was at the point where he couldn't tell the difference between his dreams and reality. I wish you'd notified us. Anyway, the mask is now missing. Maybe stolen. It would sure help if we knew where that mask was. Well, I'm sure the museum would like it back. But I don't see how it would help in terms of Raiden. Well, if we had the mask, we could examine it. Find out if somehow, some way, it could induce suicide. Or if somebody would commit murder in order to obtain it. You see, Doctor, before the department can close its file on this case, we have to be sure of exactly what happened. I understand, Lieutenant. But uh, my opinion, whatever it's worth, is that Raiden killed himself, and I don't think the mask had anything to do with it. Well, there's still the question of why the mask disappeared. I'm afraid I can't help you there, Lieutenant. 
There's probably a very good logical reason, which will come out during the course of your investigation. It'll probably turn up when somebody tries to pawn it. Well, I guess that's all. Thanks for your help, Doctor. I only wish I'd been of more help to Reagan earlier. Hmm. Well, goodbye. Bye. Goodrich, can you catch Lieutenant Martin? Is he still there? Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. He's gone. Is there anything? No, that'll be all. Then I'll be late. Oh, it's all right. He's waiting for you. Send her right in, please. Good evening, Dr. Barnes. Would you be interested in psychoanalyzing a girl who's madly in love with a doctor? <laughs> well, I'm not a very good doctor, I'm afraid. No, I mean, what's wrong? You sweet pan. I lost a patient. Suicide. so involved. I'm not sure I understand all the elements myself. Look, now I have a package from this man. He must have mailed it just before he killed himself. Horrible. Unearthly. Look, there's also a letter with the mail. Mail from the grave. Alan, don't read it now. Well, just take a few seconds. It may have some important information. All right, you're the doctor. Look, I'll just run down to the store and pick up a few things we need for dinner. Fine, you do that. Not before I get a kiss. Now will you get out of here? Dr. Barnes, by the time you read this, I will be dead. You see, I prefer death to the horrible living nightmare that lies ahead of me. I thought you could help. How could he? How could you know the living hell I was going through? Once I was a scholar. Now, I am like an animal fleeing from my own nightmares, sleeping by day, prowling by night. And how about you, Dr. Barnes? Are you certain that just underneath the surface of your own mind, there does not lurk a storm and fury waiting, waiting to be released? Are you willing to make the experiment, Doctor? You hold the key in your own hand. If you are not afraid, put the mask on now. Put the mask on now. Put the mask on now. Put 
I don't know. I was examining this mask. I put it on. Pam, this mask reveals something I had never seen before. Something that must have been in my own mind. If this is true, it may be of tremendous importance to the world of psychiatry. Something known 3,000 years ago and lost to modern science. Oh, tell me. Did your patient experiment? That thing before he died? Yes. But he had no medical training. He was a fool. He had no idea what he was doing when he stole the mask. Stole it? He took it from the Museum of Ancient History. What difference does that make? It's mine now. Yours. Alan, you have to return it. I'm not going to return it. There's much to be learned here. Of man's most secret mind. Of a world that exists even deeper than the subconscious. Pam, you don't realize what this is. Alan, I'm afraid. Something wrong with you. The case has been a strain. Oh, Pam, leave me alone. Alan, I want you to get help from someone. Someone you can trust. Trust? No one I can trust. I know that now. Alan, please. Go to see Professor Quincy. He was your teacher and he's your friend. Alan, I beg you. I don't need anyone. I don't want you to tell anyone. No one. Do you hear? No one. Alan, you're hurting me. Pam. Look at it. Can't you feel it? You what? Can't you feel it pulling at you? Oh, Alan. It's ordering me to pick it up. Look at me. Look at me. It's demanding I use it. Look at me. Now. Now. No, I won't let you!
Yes. I'm uh, Lieutenant Martin, homicide. May I come in? Of course. This way. Mm. Very nice. Thank you. Please sit down. I'll just put these things away. I won't be a minute. What is this all about? Well, uh, this is just a routine visit, Miss Albright. And, uh, I'm, uh, I'm investigating the death of a Michael Raiden. And some other related events. I don't understand. What does this have to do with me? <laughs> Nothing at all, I'm sure. It's just that I'd like some information, if you have it. Thank you. Well, Miss Albright, Raiden was a patient of Dr. Barnes. He's 
there, so I didn't know. I uh, understand that you're a close friend of the doctor. I know him. You're his fiance. All right, his fiance. What about him? Did Dr. Barnes ever discuss Raiden with you? A doctor doesn't discuss his patients with anybody. Besides, if you want to know anything about this Mr. Raiden, why don't you ask Dr. Barnes? He's uh, not at his office, and the secretary doesn't know where he is. I'd like you to tell me where I can find him. Miss Albright, did Dr. Barnes ever mention anything to you about a mask? Pardon? A mask. An ancient tribal mass. I can't follow you at all, Lieutenant. First you talk about Raiden, then about a mask. It's beyond me. Miss Albright, I was hoping you'd want to help. You might also be helping Dr. Barnes. But I don't know anything. I've got a hunch that you do. Any bit of information might help. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Dr. Barnes is a psychiatrist, and the mask was linked to his patients. He may have wanted to study it. Dr. Barnes was aware of the mask. Raiden had discussed it with him at length. There's a legend about that mask, Miss Albright. It does things to people, to even the nicest people. The legend states that the mask can hypnotize a man and bring out the evil in him. Bring it out and magnify it. Suppose the mask does what you say. What happens? That the person has no evil in him to be brought out. Is there such a person? Miss Albright, I came here because I thought that maybe you could help. There's a chance that we can avoid further trouble, maybe even save lives. You know, I don't do this just to bother people. I'm afraid I can't tell you anything. Not can't, Miss Albright. Won't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. Bye.
Dr. Bond. I'm afraid I had to cancel tomorrow's appointment. I couldn't find you all day to confirm it. What are you doing here at this time of the night? I came into type some case history. I had nothing better to do, so I thought... We'll do them tomorrow. I'll drive you home. That's the least I can do. Besides, the air will do you good. It's too nice a night to be cooped up in an office. Thanks. But I think I'd better not. I can easily take the bus home. Well, nothing doing. I said I'd take you home. Doctor, I'm worried about you. You look so worn out. I'm sure you're not working too hard. I'm flattered at your concern. Jill. You know, with your hair this way, it makes quite a difference. Thank you. I mean it. I should have noticed before. I'm glad you've noticed now. I'm so glad you insisted on bringing me here. You know, it's strange. You work with someone for a long time. You never notice. You never do anything about it. I've wanted you to. I can't breathe. So alive. I want you to help me understand the mask. I should have come sooner. I feel that even now it may be too late for me. Unbelievable. You, my most brilliant student. Now you're in the same position as Raiden was only a few days ago. I don't need you to tell me that. You weren't even listening to me. Alan, sit down. Relax. I've been listening for 20 years. Now, let's be reasonable about this. You know that nothing happens by sheer accident. There are always reasons. You must try to find the reason for your behavior. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. You've experienced a tremendous shock, Alan. Body and mind must recuperate slowly. But that's only part of it. I want you to help me to understand the mask. Isn't the problem rather one of understanding you? No, no, no. I said that too. I tell you, this mask has power. I've experienced it. Now I want to know why and how it works. Think of what that would mean to the world of psychiatry. World of psychiatry? You're asking me to enter the world of the mystic, of the occult. Yes, if you want to put it that way. What about the authorities? You stole that mask, Alan. You'd be working with stolen property. I would turn it when our studies are finished. Alan, you're asking for trouble. This sounds like a matter for the police, not for doctors. That is, if there is something else to what happened to Raiden, and what is happening to you. It doesn't matter. You mean to say you intend to put that mask on again? Yes. And no one can stop me. <laughs> Wait. All right, Ellen. I hope 
on doing the right thing. You'll help them? Yes. But only under controlled experimental conditions. You will see me every day. You hear? You will not miss one day. As long as you possess that mask, you will come to me every day. Thank you, Professor. And one more thing, Alan. When you next put on that mask, it will be here, in this house, under my observation. You can live here as long as you want. Agreed. Uh, listen, Alan. Yes? We put a time limit on this experiment. When I say no more, you will obey, and there will be no more. That's reasonable. Reasonable? It is not reasonable. Is the action of a man crazier than you are? All right. I'll see you tomorrow. I tell you, this whole case is going nuts. First the mask is gone. Then it turns up. Then it disappears again. Now Dr. Barnes is gone. There's got to be a pattern to it somewhere. It all has to do with that mask. I think Dr. Barnes knows more than he's telling. Maybe it was for research. Research? Oh, come on. That doesn't make sense. Be All serious, right, okay. will you? okay. Maybe he wants to imitate Raiden. Hey, Bill. You got something there. Look. Raiden had the mask. Now, he could have committed murder. Any one of those girls. Then killed himself. Barnes himself said he was upset, disturbed. Now, maybe Barnes wants to experiment, and he needs the mask. Hey, uh, Dan, do you mind breaking up this coffee break for a moment? I want to show you something. What, now? Yeah. Okay. There were literally hundreds of fingerprints in that museum office. Whole sets of them. You think these are the ones we want? Yep, according to what you told me. This set was found in some of the display cases and on the window panes. Mm -hmm. Tells the whole story, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, have fun. Thanks. Got any leads, Dan? Leads? I got a whole list of leads. Name of everybody who knew about the mask or came in contact with it. There they are. Dr. Alan Barnes, you can forget about. He's off somewhere. <laughs> That's one guy I'm not going to skip. Yeah. You know, when I talked to his fiance yesterday, I had the feeling that she was covering up enough lies to fill a boxcar. Well, your hunches have been right before. Yeah, but a, a hunch won't stand up in court, will it? I think I'll go down to his office. When I come back, I'll have a set of his prints. You check the cab drivers, will you, and everybody else? <sighs> yes, Matt. Stop eating. You're getting overweight. in this way. I had to see you. I had to talk to you. Now make sure you turn on the light. Was you? Yes, yes, it was. Why, darling? Why? You still have no idea, do you, Pam? No. Doesn't it make sense? This is not just a mask. It's a dream, a hope. The hope of man to know what his mind really is, what he really thinks. I don't understand. Oh, of course you don't, Pam. You're very sweet. You're very innocent. I love you very much. I always will. Thank you. 
you love me. But don't go on with this. I must go on. I must know what is in the human brain, places that man has never reached before. This isn't the way, darling. But it is the way, the only way. If you knew what I've already seen, what I've already learned. I don't want to know. It's evil. You better go, Pam. You better go now. Is it that bad, Alan? That you have to get rid of me? You have to take the drug again, Alan. It's like an addiction that builds until every pore of your body craves for it. Greed. What you feel, Alan? The need for the mask. The need to satisfy the beast that's eating into you. And when you put it on again, what will it be like? Like a shot, a jolt, a charge that cools your burning body. Will it lift you up and carry you along until you're ready to be plunged down again? Deeper, deeper, each time deeper until you die. Shut up, shut up. I'm not right. Tell me that you're still the master of it. That you still have the power to walk away from it. Free. I've tried to stop it. But I can't. I don't want to. Alan, bad. <laughs> choice isn't yours anymore. Unless you give up the mask, I'm going to Lieutenant Martin. You do that? I'm trying to help you, darling. You destroy my work? Alan. You destroy me? What can I do, Alan? Trust me. Just a little while. A few days. No. I can't anymore. going, Alan. I'm not coming back. Pam, wait. Pam. Pam, I went to see Professor Quincy last night. I promised him I'd return today. I wasn't going to keep that promise. But I will now. And the mask? We'll take it along. Quincy wants to study. Sometime tomorrow. No. Now. You need help right now. No, Pam. Tomorrow. Alan. All right. Let's go. How much longer will he sleep, Professor Quincy? Uh, through the night, I should think. I give him quite a strong sedative. I'm very grateful to you, Professor. Desperate. And there is no one to turn to except the police. I understand, Pam. Alan isn't a criminal. He's on the verge of a complete breakdown. He needs lots of rest and help. But you do think he'll be cured? I mean, in time. He'll break loose from the influence of that thing. In time? Yes. But that thing, as you call the mask, is still a mystery. It puzzles me deeply. 
I hardly know where to begin. Then how can you help her? Pam, man is constantly faced with the unknown, the inexplicable. But through study and experiment, he learns. Look, Pam, this book. Masks, the many faces of men. This is a translation from the Greek written 3,000 years ago. You see, the legend of the mask is not at all new. Even then, they believed that masks had magical powers to transform personalities. Now, listen to this. The personality of the wearer is submerged, then transformed into a person with voice, character, and governing motives different from his own. It's incredible person being made to do things against his will. Not exactly, Pam. You see, the mask itself has no thoughts to give, no ideas to convey. The legend is that it has the power to bring out the suppressed thoughts and ideas of the person wearing it. You mean the way Alan acts? What he does was in his mind all along, just waiting to be released. It could be that way. Of course, I shall have to analyze Alan and the mask much more thoroughly.
Alan. What is it? Alan. Go back to your room. Alan, please. Get out of my way. Now listen, Alan. You're not well. Now please, go back and rest. I'm telling you to get out of the way. Look at you. My dear friend. My own sweet true love. Rotten, both of you, rotten. Trying to hold me. To stop me. I hold out the knowledge of the universe to you. You spit at it. Get out of my way. Department, please. Uh, Lieutenant Martin in homicide. Oh, he's not in. What should I do now? Give Alan's description. Tell them to pick him up. I can't. He's not a criminal, not like that. You said so yourself. You must. We may be taking a terrible chance. I can't. It's Alan. Alan Barnes. Anything wrong, Alan? No, I, I have to talk to you. Won't you come out? But it's very late. But I must talk to you. Please, Jill. Please, it'll only take a few minutes. Please. All right, wait a minute. Please tell Lieutenant Martin that Miss Pamela Albright called. Yes, it's extremely urgent. No, I'm at the home of Professor Quincy. Wainwright 9. 6293. Alan, please tell me, what is the matter? Look at the stars, Jill. Aren't they beautiful? Look at them, because you will never see them again. Don't joke, Alan. I'm not joking going to do? Kill you. No. No. I must. I must experience the greatest act of a human mind. To take another life. No! no. <laughs> I'll do just as you say. Thank you. And please hurry. What did they say? He wants us to take the mask and get out of here in case Alan should come back. And the police? Lieutenant Martin is on his way. He's not far. We must hurry. I'll find the mask. I'll be right down. Where are you going? Get, get out of my way. Get out of my way. you to have the greatest experience of your life. I want you to descend to the bottom of your soul. I want you to discover no. the desires and fears of your mind. No. Put it on, Pam. Put it on. Tell me what you feel. Tell me, Pam, you 
you do see. I see you, Alan. Tell me. I see you, Alan. No, you lie. You lie. You lie. No. Tell me the truth. It is the truth. No. No. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is the famous mask. The mask was first discovered at the Lamar diggings this year. That's near the South American city of Tikal. Now, if you'll follow me across here, just behind this uh, alcove, please. And here we have some more artifacts that were dug up by the expedition that may be very interesting in relating the story of the mask. Now, most of the discoveries were masks, but these little statues are very interesting and point to a certain place. The authorities say that these uh, discoveries of the mask, some of the greatest